thank you, Lord. Lord we thank God for our brother Echo in his absence at work this morning. Amen. To our assistant, Pastor Johnson, we thank God for him this morning. Amen. Lord, we thank God. We thank God for Elder Johnson, for the uh, drums. Thank God for Minister Hicks. Amen. Minister Smith, Prophet Hicks. Thank God to goodness Sister Journey in the house. Sister Yannick in the house. Thank God for my friend Tanya. Amen. Thank God for Sister Tanya. Thank God for Sister Tanya. Thank God for Sister Tanya. Thank God Thank God for Sister Tanya. 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 Thank God for Amen. Just being rich all by itself. Yes, my God. Thank you, Lord God. Because if all I said was let it be, we know it was a word from God. Yes. Because he said let it be. And it Amen. was. And it was. And it still is. And it's going to be. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I know some of my situations that was dark and void and without form. He said let it be. And all of a sudden, hallelujah, I got a miracle. Didn't know how it was going to happen. The Bible says in the beginning, the earth was void and formed and without shape. And God said, let it be. Yes. Come on. You're going to have to talk to your situation this morning. I thought my situation might be dark right now. I, may, I know it may be void right now. But I come by the power invested in me to say, let it be. Yes. All right. Lord, have mercy. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Right. Right. Thank you, Lord God. I need a healing in my body. I still feel sick. I know my health may be void. Chapter and said that there was a woman who was all jacked up and she was caught up 
committing adultery and lust and fornication. And the Bible says that he stood at the well and he began to talk to her and her whole life changed. And, and when her life changed, she started talking to other people. And their life changed. He began to deal with me about John, the fifth chapter. And he began to talk about the man who was lame at the pool of Bethesda for Go ahead! Years. Go ahead! And stayed right there all that time. Then he took me over to the sixth chapter and he began to talk about how he began to feed the multitudes with fish and five loaves. Then he went over to the seventh chapter and just began to teach the people. And after that, he left the eighth chapter. And he got, after he done taught him, he began to deal with the woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. After he left her, he started dealing with me about the little boy who was born blind. In the ninth chapter, he said, this little boy didn't do anything, but he was born blind. Because I want to manifest my words. Every time somebody get down, I want them to see a miracle. Alright, alright. He done did all of this. And then he began to deal with me about the Tim chapter. About how after he done did all of this, how they wanted to stone him. And they were plotting against his life right then and there. And I said, Lord, I don't understand all of this stuff they just saw. And you mean to tell me they want to do away with Jesus? They want to kill the Savior, the one who just delivered and set free, the one who just caused miracles to happen. Yes, yes. So he began to deal with me. Elder Johnson out of the book of the of 11th chapter. And he started talking to me about Lazarus. And how this man he loved when he let him die. And he went the other way when he found out that Lazarus was dying. And instead of coming back while he had a chance to just heal him. He had to bring him back. He, had to, he left and came back when it was a chance to resurrect him. And some of us, God ain't going to come to your situation to heal it. He don't want to just heal it. He wants to resurrect it. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Then we get over to the 12th chapter. And the Bible talks about how the same group that wanted to kill him last chapter is now saying Hosanna. Oh God, Hosanna. And they started talking about how much they loved him. And he came in on the donkey and he made this triumphal entry. Yeah. Then he gets to the 13th chapter. And it begins to talk about how Jesus humbled himself. And at the same time, he got rid of this disciple Judas. Then he takes me over to the floor. He said, after all of that that has gone on, let not your heart be troubled. Go ahead. If you believe in God, then believe also in me. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. So I said, God, I don't quite understand where you're going at with this thing. He said, after all the hell you went through, after all the persecution you're going through, Help me to understand this, and I'm gonna drop this thing real quick, like a, like it's hot, and I'm gonna roll out of here. Amen. John 14 and one. I said, God. He said, I know it's been preached at funerals, and everybody's thinking that you know when this scripture came up, or when they preach it, they're always dealing with the fact that I'm talking about going to prepare a place for you in heaven. He said, and that is the case. But for right now, because the people need a right now word. That's it. Tell them I said, let not their hearts be troubled. If they believe in God, believe also in me. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. He said, I'm getting ready to move you to a new location. Come on. Yeah. He yeah. said, the yeah. many yeah. mansions. He yeah. said, he that dwelleth in the secret place. Go ahead. Go ahead. Shall abide under the shadows of the earth. Yes. So I said, God, help me understand this. Yes, go ahead. He said, I'm not talking about a, a mansion. I'm not really talking about a house that you're going to live in. He's talking about a place I'm about to let you reside That's in the it. spirit. Yes, he yes. said, I got so many compartments in the spirit. There's so many avenues in the spirit. And I'm getting ready to let you be in one of them. Thank you, God. Yes. He yes. said, oh, God. Oh.